Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the September Business Series Workshop presented by PNC. Today, we'll be talking about supplier diversity. It's a great topic. It's gonna to be rich with information. So I thank all of you for joining us this morning um, and being part of this discussion. And I know in the last business series in October and um, August, I was talking about pumpkin spice coffee and I think it was a little too soon for everybody then. Um, but now I have bought pumpkin spice coffee. I've even bought a couple of blazers and sweaters from downtown businesses for fall. And I actually saw the first autumn leaves falling in the yard. So in a week, we'll be into to, to the, the autumn season. So happy fall, y'all. Um, and again, thanks for, for joining us this morning. Before we get started, I just wanted to um, talk about a couple housekeeping items, as they say. So all of your lines will be muted um, for this um, presentation for the workshop, but you can put um, questions in the chat or in the Q&A um, at any point, and we'll make sure that we get to those, those questions and comments. We'll save time at the end of the presentation to, to go through those questions. Um, and also just a reminder that the presentation will be available online later today. So look for an email um, from downtownyorkpa.com. We'll have the presentation. We also have some resources that our presenters um, are providing that we'll share in that email as well. And a link to the recording. So if you wanna watch it again or share it with others in your network, um, it'll be available online this afternoon. So. Again, thank you for joining us and a, a, a special thank you to PNC, our presenting sponsor for making all of this content available throughout the year. And with us today, we have Kimmy Lay. She's vice president, branch and business center manager for PNC's West Manchester branch location. And we asked Kimmy to join us and just provide a few welcome remarks. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Kimmy. Good morning, Elaine. Good morning, everyone. Happy fall. Happy Wednesday. Um, thank you for the introduction. Um, as Elaine said, I am the business bank here, bank <laughs> center manager um, of the West Manchester branch located right over here on Kenneth Road. Uh, with being a part of the PNC retail banking team in York, I am especially proud to have PNC serve as a sponsor for the Small Business Series in partnership with the York County Economic Alliance and Downtown Inc. PNC is a main street bank, which means we combine the knowledge, insight, and strategy of a local banking team with the strength, the resources, and technology of one of the country's largest diversified financial institutions. PNC's hyper-local philosophy not only influences how we serve our clients, it also drives the way we show up for our communities where we live and work. Thank you for having me today. I look forward to today's conversation. Yes, and thank you so much, Kimmy, for joining us. I'm looking forward to this conversation as well, for sure. Um, and I, I guess I want to start with giving everyone a little background on um, why we decided to, to have this as part of the business series this morning. It's something that um, I have been wanting to discuss, oh gosh, for over a year now, because I just see these burgeoning opportunities um, for our small businesses. And so when I reached out to our speakers, um, who I'll introduce in a moment, um, Ginger Bosworth and uh, Mynika Ojo, um, and they gave me a little preview of what they would be discussing. Um, there were a couple things that they said that really resonated with me and the reason that I'm so excited to have them here today. And that um, what they said is this is an opportunity to connect a big world of opportunity to our small businesses locally. Um, and particularly to create opportunity for minority businesses. So we'll be talking about supplier diversity from the standpoint of one, why should you be interested in becoming a, a diverse supplier? Um, what does that mean for you and your business? What are the opportunities that exist, whether they are in the private sector um, or, or government at the local or federal level? And then also, how, are, how can you be successful? What are um, strategic 
next steps and tangibles that you can take away um, to hopefully be successful in that endeavor. So um, again, really excited about the topic. And with us today, as I mentioned, we have Mainika Ojo. She is the Director of Diversity and, Cl and Inclusion for the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission. She's held this role for 10 years and serves in this really important role of promoting equity and fairness in workforce hiring and business diversity. And Mainika lives in Hanover, so very close to us and always um, in York City. And so I'm happy to have her here um, for this discussion today. Also joining us is Ginger Bondsworth. Ginger is Vice President and Financial Wellness Consultant in PNC's Organizational Financial Wellness Center, um, serving the Central Pennsylvania market. She also chairs PNC's Central Pennsylvania Diversity and Inclusion Council, through which she actively works with diverse businesses in our community. So I thank you both for joining us today. And I'm just gonna say to all the participants, sharpen your pencils, get ready for some great information to be shared. Although nobody says sharpen your pencils anymore, do they? Like, does anybody even use pencils? I said to somebody, a younger person, I said, get out your calculator. And they looked at me like I was crazy. Like, what is a calculator? Anyway, y'all know what I mean by sharpen your pencils and get ready for some great information. So let me first um, turn it over to Mainika to get us started. Welcome, good morning. Thank you, Elaine, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in your County Economic Alliance's business program today. And thank you, PNC, for being the sponsor of the program. I'm gonna try to share my screen here. Um, there we go. So just bear with me um, while I do that. I am on, um, there we go. Can you all see that? No, we can't see it yet. Oh, okay. Let's see here. One moment. Probably should have done something. And Mainika, while you're doing that, I forgot okay. to mention one thing. If I could ask the participants who are on the call, if you could just share in the comments a, a couple things. Um, one, are you already a certified um, diversity supplier? Or are you here to find out more information about the process today? Also, what type of business um, do you represent? Um, is it a service provider? Um, do you make a product um, so that we can just tailor the information for you specifically? And also, um, are there any specific takeaways that you would like to, us to share with you? Um, and I do see your screen coming up. I saw briefly the presentation. Oh, okay, Ben. Just as I was probably closing it out, open it up. Let me just reopen that again. Okay, how about okay. that? Are we good to go? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm having, um, I have a Mac, so I've had some problems trying to initiate my screen. But first of all, I want to, um, again, thank you for the opportunity to participate. I apologize for the, um, you know, for the technical difficulties there. But it's important for me to really talk to you all today about the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission, because interesting enough, I've not really had an opportunity to do much engagement in the York community regarding the opportunities that we have at the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission. So this is a wonderful uh, way for us to engage you and also to share something that's very important to us. Most of the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission uh, extends uh, through the center, uh, east, east west portion of the state. But although our central office is located in uh, Dauphin County, actually the majority of our roadway in that area, only two miles of it actually goes through Dauphin County. And we actually have 11 miles of roadway that actually uh, focuses, uh, that goes through your county. So that's just an interesting fact. So although we're only 25 to 30 minutes away from York City, uh, we do have a significant portion of the roadway that services York. 
So we utilize York as a way to um, engage people in employment opportunities, and hopefully we'll be able to engage you in business and supplier diversity as well by introducing you to, to what we do here at the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission. So just to give you a brief uh, the overview of what the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission does, we are America's first superhighway. We are the first toll road in the country. We're considered the granddaddy, the numero uno. We're also one of the largest turnpikes in the country and also in the world, spanning 50, 552 miles across Pennsylvania. Uh, our system operates 17 toll plazas. We have 27 maintenance facilities and we have 1,000 employees and 68 toll plazas. So just to give you some uh, information on tolling, tolling, uh, we are the only toll road in Pennsylvania and we are exclusive in, in that regard. But tolling, um, the industry of tolling itself is using this alternative way to fund highway development and also to move inter interstate commerce throughout the country. And so the use of tolling is a central component to our nation's transportation funding. We are also, although we are a quasi state agency, uh, the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission is mandated by the legislature to not accept any state funding for a roadway. So what that means is, is that while we follow some of the public procurement processes with regards to it, we are not allowed by law to take money from the state budget. So that means that our budget is separate from the governor's budget. So oftentimes we rely strongly on toll funding to support the maintenance of the roadways. So anytime you're riding on that roadway and you see some construction going on, you know that we were responsible, that you are actually funding that process. So it's a user, um, it's a usury system that we use. And it's important to note that because tolling industry is very different in terms of uh, what you see with the Department of Transportation, even though we use some of the same procurement processes. Uh, our, our commitment also is to increase mobility and get drivers to where they want to go and to do that in a seamless manner. If you've been on the tollway, you know that it's, uh, it's designed to move fast and to prevent you from not having any hiccups in traveling without by the elimination of lights and uh, curvy roads. So that's some of our commitment. And so also with toll funding, we are not a, we're able to complete projects much faster due to the fact that we do not have to wait for rations from the government to proceed with projects or sections of the project. So just to um, reinforce some of the insurances and public trust, again, I had mentioned earlier that our funding source is not through state funding or state taxes, but it's through toll and user funds. Uh, but we do follow some of the procurement practices and some of the uh, assurances that the government follow with regards to public work and the sector. And so I note here several things that really support diversity, equity, and inclusion. Uh, and also the importance of having agencies, public agencies, and also quasi-public agencies. And so those assurances really speak to the fact that it's important as a state entity that we support human capital and human employment uh, within the Pennsylvania uh, state, within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and that we support the disadvantaged Pennsylvania workers. And that falls under the Pennsylvania Project Independence Act. Uh, we also have an assurance that uh, we are committed to favor public interest against private interest, that we are to support uh, in the aggregate, the interest of the public sector. And that means all the citizens of the Commonwealth. Um, we also refer to the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Program, which was a program started by the United States Department of Transportation 
that remedies those ongoing discrimination and exclusion of groups that typically have been historically denied opportunities to participate in any uh, contracting or working opportunities. And then finally, under Act 89 of 2013, Section 303, which is the part that governs us, we seek to maximize and we commit to maximizing diverse business participation in all of our projects. And we'll talk a little bit about that later when we discuss diverse businesses. So most of the projects that we uh, work with or that we work under the auspices of Act 89 of 2013, which is Section 303. This is the state guidelines with regards to diverse business. Remember, I talked to you about uh, we do follow some of their guidelines. We seek to maximize opportunities on all contracting uh, opportunities within the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission. We do nearly a billion dollars close to a billion dollars in, in billing um, and, and invoicing every year. So we do a lot of our, there are many opportunities. So we follow the diverse business program. What this does is, is that all construction contracts that are assigned um, on, uh, all of our construction contracts are assigned a diverse business commitment by my department, which is the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. Uh, the bulk of our contracting is for the maintaining of the roadway. So 95% of construction projects have diverse business participation levels, which simply means that every single contract that comes to our office, we assign a diverse business participation goal to those contracts. We do the same also for our engineering contracts. We also do that for our vertical contracts, which is our construction contracts where we're building uh, maintenance facilities or, um, or even travel plazas or uh, salt sheds across the system. So all construction contracts that have general construction, plumbing and electrical opportunities, all of those are assigned a 10% goal uh, with regards to diverse business participation. And I'll explain to you who is considered a diverse business and who has who's certified to, to meet that criteria. Uh, we also do the same for our information technology. Uh, we now have seen, um, as many of you know, in the last year, our system has gone all electronic tolling. And so with the result of that, we've seen a significant increase in um, in, uh, of contracting within the information technology sector, specifically to support our back office, which is the customer service aspect. So you'll see a lot of that coming up through the turnpike as well. Uh, to fund those roads, we also seek opportunities to, uh, to put out bonds, to issue bonds. So we do a lot of financial services works where we uh, also now require diverse business participation on that as well. So here are some of the contracting opportunities that we typically have available. Uh, heavy highway construction and design build. Again, bulk of our road, we have 552 miles of roadway. So we're constantly doing work to maintain bridges and, and ensure that there's seamless opportunities for travel and that there's smooth travel opportunities. Uh, engineering design, uh, construction design, Construction inspection. We also do small procurements. Those are those small office supplies. We we do that, and um, job order contracts, which I talked about, the building of facilities, information technology, and financial services. Okay, so these are some of the certifications that are accepted by 99. 0.5% of all the projects on uh, the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission. And the importance of certification is, is that for larger businesses to utilize you as subcontractors and to be counted for, uh, counted uh, toward either the RFP or the bid, uh, they must utilize firms that are certified with the Pennsylvania uh, unified Certification Program, 
the Small Business Administration's 8A certification program, which is a program that typically is for 10 years once you're certified for it. The United States Department of Veteran Affairs certification program and the, and the Service Disabled Veterans uh, Business um, Affairs program. We accept both those certification towards certification purposes. The National Minority Supplier Development Council, which is, um, that could be from any of their uh, subsidiaries in this particular part of the, uh, in this particular part of the country, is the Eastern Area Minority Supplier Development Council, and the Women's Business Enterprise National Council. That's also a national program as well. So those are all the certifications that we accept uh, on our projects uh, to count them toward diverse business participation on all those goals that we meet. So that is all that I have. I just wanted to do a brief introduction to, to our program. And uh, that's our CEO there, the second, uh, the one standing next to me, that's Mark Compton and a few of my staff members. So um, again, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, please contact me. This is my contact information. I'll also place some information into the chat, uh, a couple of links that will link you to our website and provide you with additional information on our business supplier diversity program. Thank you for the opportunity to present this. Thank you so much, Vinika. That was great information. And um, what I heard that I just wanted to reiterate, it sounds like um, while people may assume that there are only opportunities um, with the Turnpike Pipe Commission in construction, there's also IT opportunities, financial opportunities, um, those emerging categories that um, in order to have efficiencies and, and move towards the future, um, those are, are new opportunities as well. So thank you for that and for providing your contact information. I do just want to share with you in the Q&A, I am seeing um, several women-owned businesses um, and the majority are saying that they are currently not certified. So it appears that any information that we can offer um, to help them in the certification process would be fantastic. So um, with that, I will turn it over to Ginger Bosworth. Ginger, good morning, welcome. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you again so much, Eileen, for having us. Um, this is actually uh, near and dear to my heart. I just find supplier diversity and its evolution um, really quite fascinating as far as the intentional um, outreach and communication that's been put forth in both the private, um, and the public sector to, you know, get that equitable ability in our businesses to participate. Um, so thank you for that. So um, you should see on your uh, desktops our um, information that I want to share with you today about PNC supplier diversity. And the first thing I just kind of want to level set with the audience <clears throat> is what I'm going to share with you today is an example of PNC's policy and, and ways in which we look to engage with businesses in order to award uh, services, projects, whatever the need may be from across our entire line. And what I'm really hoping the audience takes away today from this is this is unique to PNC, but typically most large public corporations are operating in a similar model. So there is due diligence required to kind of figure out each industry specific process. Um, but we really just kind of wanted to showcase uh, as a demonstration specifically, you know, our process uh, and things to consider that, that we would look for um, and the other thing I will just recommend in general to the audience is any public uh, company, when you go to their website, if you simply in their search bar 
type in supplier diversity, it will typically take you to their policy, their procedure, um, and the ways in which they look to engage as well. Um, you, you should be able to find all of that information or at least um, a contact, et cetera. So with that, we'll get into um, PNC's definition and process of supplier diversity. So next slide, please. So the first thing to understand is that every entity is going to define possibly a diverse supplier a little differently. <clears throat> From PNC's perspective, um, first of all, it's a proactive and intentional business practice that we do providing that fair opportunity to compete. And for our specific requirements, it's 51% ownership operated and controlled by an individual that meets one or more of the defined diverse classifications, which you will see to the right. Minority and small businesses are defined, such as African American, Hispanic American, Asian Pacific American, Asian Indian American, or Alaska Natives. A small business is defined by the Small Business Administration. So we um, typically like to follow SBA guidelines from uh, for consistency purposes, right? So your first step is to understand the definition and think about how are you um, organized in terms of your um, your business articles. Next. So some of our specific details. Um, <clears throat> within the PNC organization, supplier diversity sits within supply chain and it aligns directly with our strategic sourcing. So at PNC, its policy is to be intentional about supplier diversity when purchasing those goods and services. So um, much like my colleague was referencing the policies that the PA Turnpike um, has put in place, so too has PNC, for example, on how that specific selection process um, and the vetting goes. Intentional inclusion of at least one program supplier when PNC is competitively bidding for its products and services, qualified program suppliers should be given fair consideration. And just as an idea from a spend perspective, in 2020, PNC spent approximately 360 million with the small and diverse segment across our um, PNC footprint, which again, kind of alludes to in Kimmy's introduction, that small town or main street bank philosophy uh, for PNC with engaging in our local communities with the support and the technology um, of, of a national bank. Next. An example of different products and services uh, that we may seek. So marketing, corporate services, lending and data services, employee related services, realty, technology and banking services. Um, all things to just consider in terms of when you may think to yourself, you know, who are my potential target um, companies that I may wish to try and do business with. Next. So here's the meat of the information, right? The process. I like to call it the ticket to the dance from, again, PNC's perspective. So we have a portal and you'll see here there is the website listed um, under visit and it's on our public domain. So it's pnc.com slash supplier diversity um, and it's going to tell you more about the registration and the um, program process. And so why should you consider registering? So you will be contacted if and when a sourcing opportunity aligns with your profile information, and then you'll be notified of events or development opportunities that may be of interest to you and your company um, for a future state. So the registration process, the reason I call it the ticket to the dance, <clears throat> is you may have a phenomenal product or service that in this instance, PNC may need, but we don't know about you if you're not in the portal, because that is the first stop we go for all um, information when we start to source or look for um, a suitable vendor to set out those RFPs, et cetera. So that's why in most of these corporations, there is some sort of a portal or a registration so that they just already know who you are. 
So tips for registration, ensure your profile information is clear and concise at a minimum, update that profile annually, especially if your capacity changes. Um, maybe you are growing over the years and your outreach is greater, et cetera. It's important to keep it as accurate as possible. So once registered, reach out to the supplier diversity team to introduce your company. Um, they'll do brief intake sessions just to understand more, uh, making sure the information you provided during the registration is um, easily understood from uh, the internal team's perspective. Next. So some memberships. So again, my colleague, she referenced two of these organizations that the Turnpike Commission uh, uses for satisfaction of their certification process um, is about these affiliated uh, memberships that you, know, you may wanna consider joining. Uh, they specifically have the diverse I should say supplier um, process to become a certified supplier. So these organizations, as you see, PNC are, is a corporate sponsors of these because we support their initiatives, believe in their messaging of that support on these small businesses. Um, and they uh, also do have these local chapters. So uh, the Women's Business Enterprise National Council, for example, was one that was brought up earlier they have a, a regional council um, that is kind of to the east. So it covers us, us here in South Central PA and you can go to their website and find out more information, et cetera. So I'd really encourage you to just think about, are you already working with any type of um, advocacy group on your behalf to help you think about how to grow your business? Next. So how best to engage? So again, I talked about due diligence. It's doing your homework, coming to the table, understanding where you may fit into the organization and be sure to effectively communicate your company's value add. Being concise, be specific. Don't feel you need to be the Jill of all trades. Highlighting the areas where you have expertise and experience will help us to connect you to the appropriate opportunities and internal stakeholders. And really managing the expectations. So understand that your product or service offering may not be a fit. Be open to indirect opportunities. Know that PNC does not guarantee business uh, to diverse owned businesses or customers. It, it's a process, isn't still about the best fit uh, for what the need is that we're looking to fulfill. Uh, but when we talk about indirect opportunities, it's a concept, uh, again, that I just want to share. So <clears throat> you may have, again, that phenomenal service and that specific expertise. Um, but there may be that recommendation from PNC that your service also could fit under the umbrella uh, of, a, of a larger vendor or supplier that we do business with. And would you consider being paired with them as a secondary supplier? Um, so again, it's still a way to get you there. Uh, it's still a way to get you, uh, you know, the business that you're looking for and be open to those suggestions uh, from any organization that may want to, you know, provide that advice to you. Next. So specifically for PNC, again, we talked about the supplier diversity department, um, questions that you may have, the fielding, this is their web, this is um, their direct email, suppliersdiversity at pnc.com, and again, where to find us on the website. I, I have provided to um, Elaine in the group afterwards. I believe it'll be posted somewhere. We do have a um, specific flyer with all of this contact information and process that will be uh, available for you later today. And so with that, I'll turn it back to you, Elaine. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ginger. That was really good information and it's prompting some questions here. Um, so I, I want to give us enough time so that we can go through these. And um, I guess I can just start at the, the top of the queue here. Um, this question is for both uh, PNC and for the Turnpike. 
Do you do any procurement in the creative arts industry, for example, purchase of fine arts or other related services? So again, I would say <clears throat> when you're dealing in such a large entity um, such as PNC, I myself don't have that specific answer. That's why we always will direct all of those questions to the supplier diversity email, but also again, that registration, because perhaps it's not a direct purchase, but there may be a larger entity that we do business with that you could be recommended to partner with them that they may want to purchase your goods on their behalf. Ah. So I want to, um, yes, I want, I'm sorry, Elaine, no, uh, I want to answer that as well, because creative uh, arts is, is, is very broad. And the first thing that comes to mind to me is um, our communications department. We have a massive communication program at the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission. So at any time, there may be an opportunity to participate in some creative art uh, specific projects. I don't anticipate that we would have something coming out that says we're looking for a creative artist, um, although it, it's happened in the past, but we may be looking for a marketing campaign or a marketing uh, um, organization to maybe do some major marketing for us long term, and that would be an opportunity for a creative artists to develop a relationship with one of the firms that will potentially uh, bid or uh, submit a proposal for it. So the answer is yes and no. I mean, there's, I mean, we look at our organization as a transportation entity, but uh, just as PNC and just as Ginger had, had mentioned also, there may be opportunities often for uh, all types of services that you may not have considered. Yes, I think that's a point and right that goes there. back to, something that you said, um, Ginger, which is that you have to do your homework, right? Do your research and think, no pun intended, creatively about how you can position yourself. Um, what comes to mind to me is when we think about fine art, it, it just makes me think of the Yorktown Hotel project, right? We're in the 12 month countdown to the hotel being completed. And part of that um, work was identifying local artists to have represented in the hotel. And so as Ginger suggested, you know, if you're thinking like that, you see a new project that's happening and um, maybe there's new construction um, manufacturing or a corporation that's coming into to the area. Think about how, when they get to that point, they're going to have to design that entire space. So maybe being proactive and looking um, for those new development projects, going to their websites, reaching out, networking with them, and positioning yourself to be a diverse supplier um, for that project, I think um, certainly is, is an opportunity as well. And, and the only other thing, <clears throat> right, to, to understand the size, sometimes if you're looking to engage, you know, for very large companies. Um, again, kind of the reason why you're seeing this portal process to get information in there and ready at hand. Um, oftentimes there could be projects that are five years out that are already starting to plan and to source. So at a local level, you're not going to see any advertising, but rest assured the process has already started behind the scenes in anticipation. Um, so yes, there can be those shorter terms where you start to see it visually happening by signage, perhaps in your market, but there also could be things that are gonna happen that you don't know about to the public, which is why it's just so important, again, when you think about how do I just get my information out there, even if it, you feel as though there is that radio silence because you're hoping for a response in 30 days, 90 days, I think it's the realistic expectations. It could be four years and, until we find a fit, but you're still in there. It doesn't expire. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a that's a great point. And you're right. These large projects do work years. Um, 
And you also mentioned that you should update your information regularly to make sure that it's current. And there's no, that isn't looked upon as there's a lot of change in this organization. It's more looked no. upon as keeping your information fresh. So if you, um, I don't know what information is asked in there per se, because I haven't gone to it. Yeah. But I think that leads to our next question, which is, um, are there requirements that my company needs to be in business for a certain number of years, have a revenue of a certain amount or a certain number of employees with, with um, and it doesn't say which type of contracts, but um, I think that is directed to you, Ginger. So really the answer is no, not necessarily. <clears throat> Again, it, the, each company's portal or process is going to indicate their specific requirements, very similar to Mynika, um, when you're in the, um, you know, the state, the local or the federal space, they're, they're going to be very specific. So you, again, your information that you kind of put together, your, your paperwork, your documentation, it is not going to be a one size fits all um, submission that's going to meet the requests of all the businesses that you are you know, wooing to want to do business with. Everyone is gonna have their own unique stipulations, requirements, and, and that's really just, again, that kind of due diligence process. You can have the, the fundamental basics, but each one is gonna be a little different. Mm -hmm. um. I want to echo that as well uh, with regards to that because we've had we've had contractors work with us that are just a single in, um, entity uh, to companies that have thousands of employees. So it really just depends on the project. So mm -hmm. what we look for on our projects is capabilities. And if you're going in as a second tier, a second tier meaning that you're working under one of our prime contractors as a sub. Um, then they're going to be looking for the capabilities. They're going to want to know that you're able to, to, to do the work or whatever specific item or uh, service that you're providing that they're able uh, to do as well. Um, another thing I want to say too, I want to go back to um, uh, what Ginger had, had mentioned with regards to um, capabilities. I want to emphasize also that there are many ways in which uh, with the public sector that you can enter into projects. We have the best of both worlds uh, because of the fact that we're not under the governor's uh, budget. So we don't uh, accept state funding, and but we have access to all the state procurement opportunities as well. So in addition to doing work with the Pennsylvania Turnpike Commission, you could also register uh, with the Department of General Services in a specific servicing area and be a part of their ITQ, which is information to qualified list. And the turnpike will actually utilize that step to go in. So say for instance, we were looking for someone to, to do diversity training. Okay, so we would go to the Department of General Services listing of people and if it's a small amount of money, we could either do it exceptionally or we can go to their ITQ list, which is called information to qualify and actually have three of their people or three of their uh, businesses that are registered under them that does that submit a proposal to us. So that's another way they could use CoStars, which is a, a state procurement system also, which we use quite a bit to source our janitorial supplies and all of those. So the importance of being a part of the state system also transfers to the turnpike as well. So mm -hmm. through the mm -hmm. Department of General Services. So I highly recommend that relationship with them as well. Great, okay, I did make note of that and will, as I said, share information um, as a follow up with everyone who attended. Um, my Nick, I'm not sure that you can answer this, this question firsthand, but since you just referenced the state system, maybe you'll know based on um, your experience working with diverse suppliers, 
The question is how long should I expect the state certification process to take? Okay, so uh, the state does not have a state certification process. Each one of those entities are individual entities within themselves. And so uh, it just really depends on what it, what it is. I know with the PAUCP, which is the Pennsylvania Unified Certification Program, that is done through the United States Department of Transportation, but it's done through um, five of the certified entities. There's SEPTA, uh, Philadelphia Airport, uh, Allegheny County, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, and um, uh, Allegheny, uh, Port Authority of Allegheny County, which is their uh, metro system. So those are the five certifying entities. They may take from six months to a year. So it's not an easy process through that. I have heard that it goes faster going through National Minority Supplier Development Council or, or WeBank. And if you're a veteran, you may be able to get that program too. But I would expect to have six months to go. And, and again, just as uh, we had both, we both really do need to convey, it does not provide a guaranteed opportunity. It is a lot of work to put in to do any and all of these certifications because you have to have financials, you have to prove ownership of the business, you have to prove the inception of how you developed it. I mean, it, there's just a lot to the process uh, to begin with, but it's so worth it in the long run if you're able to commit to working with either a transportation en entity or if you wanna do the banking. And I also wanna to say too, we can only provide the opportunities that are there for you, but the development of businesses is really important, especially when you're a small business. You may be very um, good at the work that you do, but you also have to do your due diligence in terms of making sure that you have a, a marketing strategy that you're differentiating yourself so that you can be seen by these organizations so that you, you are offering something that no one else is offering. And that's why it's important to have these relationships with you at the YCEA or Small Business Administrations or the Minority Business Development Agency to really hone in on that because your financials, all of that is, is important moving forward, especially in state work. Uh, yeah, so you're, you, you, I mean, you have to be financially viable to, 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 to be able to uh, work in this industry. So, so, you know, it's just important. So that's why these relationships and, and these type of seminars are important for us to connect with you, uh, Elaine, uh, Suli, and YCEA to really make sure and implore that people are getting the resources that they need so they can go to PNC or go to a turnpike or go to the state and get those opportunities. And I thank you for, for mentioning that. And I thank you for your partnership because um, I believe that, you know, these kinds of conversations and discussions and platforms are what help people to get networked and to get the information that we need. And um, I just want to take a moment before I go to the next question to share with everyone, um, as Monica said, you know, that networking um, and those relationships are important. We are are hosting through um, the York County Economic Alliance, a Get Connected event. It will be in early December. Um, I will share more information about that um, in the, the coming days, but um, it's open to all businesses. It is focused on contracting, um, but, but it's a networking event in general. So I would um, encourage and invite all of you to go to YCAPA Dot org. We'll put that in the chat and sign up for the e-newsletter. And when you do that, those events that Monica just mentioned, you will be among the first to know when the Get Connected event is, how to register, free event. You'll network with, with other people um, who both are suppliers, but also people who are seeking um, my businesses for procurement opportunities. So please don't miss that one. Um, and um, I guess I'll go to the next question. Um, and this is a follow-up to what you were just speaking about, Monique. I've had businesses 
say to me that they have been um, advised that they should hire someone to do these applications for them so that they are best positioned. I know this is somewhat perspective and personal opinion, but can you speak on that? So, okay, so this is my thought on it because there's probably a business out there that uh, acts as an agent. But if you think along these lines here, you're completing an application. The greater part of what you will be doing in the application process is gathering the documents, right? So, I mean, you're the ones that's going to be gathering documents. So you'll be submitting the documents to, you know, to, to the entity based on, on what they're asking for. So the question is, if you're going to be doing all the work, is it really feasible for you to, you know, do that. Of course, we always recommend working with your accountant if there's some uh, complex issues that are that are going on. Most of the case, most of the case, it's not, because what you're uh, wanting to do is you want to first of all identify that there's need. You have to verify the fact that you're 51% owner, and this goes across the board. This is um, all of them because they all follow the small business uh, guidelines all the certification programs. So 51% owners, you'll have to do that. Sometimes uh, with the Pennsylvania Unified Certification Program, uh, you do have to identify your startup and how that started up and identify the funds that were used to start up your business if you're a new business. So, you know, so, so, so the answer is, if you're in a position to hire someone, that is fine. But really, you're going to still have to provide that information to them. So, I mean, the application part of maybe two or three pages long. So it's, yeah, I would say you probably wouldn't need it. But, you know, you may want to get some help from your accountant, particularly if there's some complex issues such as um, what your net worth is, your personal net worth, because there's a threshold. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess I think uh, of it along the, I'm sorry, go right ahead, Jen. No, no, no. I was just, I agree with you, Monica. When you think yeah. about <clears throat> cost allocation <laughs> and, you know, fair value exchange in time for convenience is I would just challenge the thought to think about then why, you know, it could be very beneficial in joining one of these organizations that are highly reputable, um, such as uh, the WEBEC for Women Business Ownership, the National Minority Council, our local chapter, the Eastern, um, even things such as the NGLCC, which is the National Gay and um, Lesbian Chamber. There's a local council called Keystone. Um, you know, their specific process is across the board to help you as a small business. And from a corporation perspective, the reason why PNC as a whole on the national le level contributes um, and supports these organizations is because if you think bigger and a bigger concept, we want to help the organizations provide accurate information to their members. Right. And so that's why um, folks on our supplier diversity team meet regularly with the national conference, because it's all about communication of processes accurately to their members. So there is a cost. Right. These organizations aren't free memberships. But I guess I would think what's the value in the greater scheme that I may get in joining an organization? Because even think beyond supplier diversity. There are things where they probably are going to advise you in legal matters, uh, advise you in HR matters if you have one or more employees. It's just, uh, I, I strongly am an advocate that any small business should be a part, even in, at least in the beginning, um, of some sort of an organization, such as YCEA. Um, just to take as much out of it as you can put into it to, to help you on that path versus the funding or the cost for one specific process, right? Yes, I agree with you wholeheartedly. <laughs> I think with those memberships, and I, I thought about it from my time um, being a business owner, 
it's an investment in yourself, right? Mm -hmm. It's one time, you know, you check this off the list. It's, it's more of a long-term um, return on an investment with some of these uh, memberships. And so we did add in the chat um, the website for uh, your County Economic Alliance. You can go there, find some of the resources that have been referenced, um, sign up for the e-newsletter. And also we're gonna share the list of the organizations that you mentioned. We're not specifically endorsing or recommending any of them. Nope. We have to look at it and see what makes the most sense for you, your business, your product and service and go from there. Um, we are running close on time. So let me just get through a couple more questions. This one is, would you consider it beneficial to market or advertise that my business utilizes minority owned vendors? And how, how, what's the, the way or place to do that? Mm, advertise in terms of? Uh, it just says market or advertise. So I don't know if um, the attendee is asking, are there benefits from the standpoint of, this looks like a question more from the standpoint of someone who is on the procurement side of it. What are the benefits to my business to, to market that I utilize diverse suppliers? Well, I, okay. Yeah, let me just uh, take a stab at this because <laughs> one of the things I, I think it's important, uh, just as uh, PNC and many organizations have um, that are in the private sector, um, have an assurance they have a, a corporate uh, social responsibility to support not only uh, what's happening in the environment, but also to 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 really re-engage their um, procurement, uh, you know, their uh, procurements, and you know, are they really reaching and connecting to the communities that they serve through all aspects, whether it be hiring or contracting? Uh, it would be the same with um, us as well. We're a little bit. We are required by, you know, state law to 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 do this, you know, to, to engage in the process. Because again, it, it goes back to those assurances that why do we as a public or quasi public entity exist if not to support the people in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And that means that you don't exclude anyone from the process. And so oftentimes you have to look at ways in which we can re-engage with our communities by looking at historical practices that did exclude people. So uh, the answer is yes. <laughs> I would definitely say so. Just for yeah, that it's, Yes, I was just trying to think in terms of <clears throat> specific to the supplier diversity process. It may come up in some companies' questions about you and your organization and your own policies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I can't see a downside to it mostly yeah. mm -mm. Um, because it just brings a competitive advantage to both your business and the opportunities that it provides um, to the supplier. So we have a couple minutes left. I'm going to do a quick roundup. The Get Connected event in early December, um, the Women's Business Center organization also has a women-owned businesses um, forum on October 12th at the Wyndham. So there are a lot of women-owned businesses on the workshop. So please consider joining that. The YCL, YCEA also has Bloom Small Business Development Classes 101 for new and growing businesses. It's free to sign up for those classes. The next class starts October 7th and it goes through November 11th. And I would encourage all of you to please take a look at that. Um, and I'm gonna give the floor to you ladies last and I will just ask you, this is a tough one to summarize, but if somebody like, yes, I'm ready to get started. Most of the businesses are not currently certified based on the survey. Can you give me three things? And I think I know what they are. Three things that they should do, next steps to get certified. So Number one, I would say pull your documentation, start pooling your business um, articles, whatever your formation is, does it indicate your ownership, 51%, um, your, your banking financials, start getting those documents together, and then think about, I would say, do I want to attempt this process on my own, or number two, should I consider seeking 
the support in one of the diverse organizations. So the second, um, the only thing I want to add to that is, yes, pull the documentation because you're going to need it. But uh, there are also additional resources. The Pennsylvania Unified Certification Program is a free certification. It is a more lengthy process, but they also have additional assistance as well through the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise Supportive Services Program, which is with PennDOT. So, uh, which is the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. They have the program listed on their website. So there are resources to assist you in, in pulling all the documentation together and, and further uh, assuring why the importance of certification is important. Uh, many of the certifications that were mentioned before can be used in multiple industries. Um, I gave you the ones that we use in, in uh, the Turnpike. Um, Ginger had additional ones that could be used throughout. It would be an added advantage if you are looking to seek, if you're really dil diligently looking to seek opportunities in your space. But I caution you to really engage in the area that is that you're wanting to work in. So, you know, so if banking is what you're looking to work in and that's the space that you want to work in, really commit that time to do it or if transportation is one of those areas. So, you know, just really engage because it is a process. So in addition to doing the work, you know, you're going to have to be a marketer, an accountant and everything else, but it's worth the, it's, it's worth the process. Thank you. This, this has been a wealth of information. Um, I hope that all of you got good information and, and thank you for those um, really tangible first and next steps. Um, so thank you again to Ginger Bosworth, Mynika Ojo for joining us this morning. Thank you to all of you for being a part of this conversation. And um, I just am, am so happy to have the two of you here as resources in our local community. As we started this conversation, um, we said, you know, creating opportunities for minority businesses and opening up this world of opportunity to our small businesses. So thank you again. Have a great day, everyone. And don't forget to join us on October 20th for our next business series presented by PNC. Bye, everybody. Have a good day. Have a great day. Have a good one.